Live from our seven Tasmania studios, your nightly news with Kim Miller begins now. And good evening to you. First tonight, a scathing report has been handed down into mental health services for older Tasmanians. The minister responsible forced to apologise following a sickening incident which left one resident's family horrified. A place that should care for our most vulnerable branded as outdated and inadequate. A new report slamming Hobart's Roy Fagan Centre, designed to deliver mental health services to older Tasmanians. Prompted by this stomach-churning discovery of fly larvae in a resident's sock on Christmas Day last year. An extremely distressing and unacceptable incident. Determining the 78-year-old man didn't receive sufficient care in the 24 hours leading up to the incident. And on behalf of the Tasmanian Government, I unreservedly apologise uh, to the patient's family. They've indicated that their driving force was to make sure this never happened to, to anybody else again. The report finding there was no contemporary model of care at the centre, a lack of nurses and allied health staff, and that the state paid inadequate attention to older persons' mental health services. It's now sparked a broader debate around the support Tasmania offers to its older residents and the level of care they're provided. And we basically know now what staff have known for some time, and that is that Roy Fagan uh, isn't fit for purpose anymore in terms of its clinical governance and models of care processes. The report recommending forming a statewide mental health program for older persons and a recruitment overhaul at the centre. Medical bodies say a reliance on casual nurses is part of the problem, while aged care advocates say we need to better care for our most vulnerable. Well, there are models of care that um, the state government can certainly build on. They must be person-centred, that's really critical. The government has accepted all recommendations, confirming a number of new protocols have already been implemented. Josh Duggan, 7 Tasmania News. The horror blaze at Hobart's Brunswick Hotel has left businesses on Liverpool Street at a standstill for a second day. Those impacted gathered near the charred property to voice their concerns as investigations into the cause of the fire continue. Completely destroyed, behind the facade, the hollowed out remains of the Brunswick Hotel are all that's left. This morning, neighbouring business owners gathered on the street, searching for answers about when they can reopen. Hopefully you can come back in and, and get your business you know, sorted out, back up and running for, for a start tomorrow. But that's not a guarantee. Investigations underway into what caused the fiery inferno in the early hours of yesterday morning. Many left shaken by the devastation. When I arrived it was like Armageddon, so I was just I just couldn't believe that my businesses and the businesses above me were still standing. I really just couldn't believe it. After an anxious wait, most have been able to access their properties to assess the damage. Our, our whole laneway is gone, so our entrance from Liverpool Street has gone, but the inside of our building is standing. Thankful firefighters were able to contain the blaze. It was only a quick look inside the building, but I couldn't see any damage, any water damage or any heat damage. The main damage, um, not in, in so far as the Brunswick Hotel goes, is with the ANZ Bank where we had some water damage, but otherwise um, smoke damage has been quite limited. But for some, the total damage bill is still unknown. Tea towels, dressing gowns, you know, French made things, lots of fabric. Um, and if that's smoke damage, then that's three quarters of our stock. Karen Belbin, emotional today, forced to consider the future of her much loved store. So Shemwell came out of the mire, burned down, and it, it's a bit ironic that it might mean we might close after the Brunswick burned down. I, I don't know. Even businesses who were able to open took a hit, still in the dark about how long the closures will last. I'm still waiting on some deliveries. Uh, they didn't load them on the truck. Uh, they thought I was closed, unfortunately. Tasmania police say it's yet to receive safety clearance to reopen the impacted section of Liverpool Street, with an update expected tomorrow. Meg Sides, 7 Tasmania News. Tasmania has closed its border to parts of Victoria after several people connected to the New South Wales outbreak travelled through that state while infectious. Anyone in Tasmania who has visited a high-risk premises at specific times must self-isolate and be tested. 
Travellers from these areas are now no longer permitted to enter the state. A full list of locations can be found online. Public Health has also upgraded the Fairfield Local Government area in New South Wales to a level two high risk area. From midnight, anyone who has been there in the past two weeks, including returning residents, won't be allowed into the state. Labor's Jen Butler has been brought back into the party's shadow cabinet just weeks after she was given the boot. Reinstated leader Rebecca White made the changes after David O'Byrne stood down from the top job and all portfolios. Ms Butler will take on the responsibility for science, building and veterans affairs. Shane Broad has been shifted to treasurer and newcomer Janie Finlay will be in charge of primary industries and small business. Tasmania Police is urging motorists to drive with greater care after recent frosty weather has seen numerous crashes on our roads. People are reminded to drive to conditions and not necessarily up to the speed limit. Authorities say black ice creates potentially hazardous road conditions when, which often can't be seen. The rain, snow, hail are all contributing to uh, risk factors towards uh, accidents and crashes around the, the, the state. Motorists also reminded to slow down to 40 kilometres an hour when approaching emergency vehicles. And Tasmania Police has officially opened its new radio dispatch centre, allowing first responders to better communicate. The Hobart Centre was originally opened in 1990, with around 1,500 calls processed every day. It's now hoped new technology and workspaces will help keep Tasmanians safer. That allows us to train together where we need to, and it provides significant benefits for the Tasmanian community, because if there are significant incidents or emergencies occurring, we can actually all work closely together. The $2 million overhaul is part of a broader project to connect our emergency services. An inquiry into child sexual abuse within Tasmanian institutions has already received more than 70 submissions. The state-based Royal Commission was launched following a rising number of allegations in the public sector. Dozens of submissions have already been lodged from victims, organisations and supporters of children currently impacted. The commissioners are now keen to hear from those affected in the education and health systems, public schools and at the Ashley Youth Detention Centre. Submissions will remain open until September 3rd. A trailblazing police officer has reached an even greater rank. Donna Adams, whose big break came when helping detectives track down an armed thief, is now the state's first female deputy commissioner. A mentor to younger recruits, the new deputy is well aware of the long road to the top for police women. On a day making history, the past was not lost on Donna Adams, well versed in the restrictive role of police women a century ago. To look after children, um, uh, to um, suppress fortune telling, um, and two, uh, they had their own policewoman's office. Although Ms Adams' tasks have been vastly different, even when she started. I had a handbag, um, I had a baton and a set of handcuffs to put, uh, to carry in my handbag. She now carries the title of Tasmania's first female Deputy Commissioner, replacing the retiring Scott Tilliard. An accumulation of decades of disaster response. The TAS Fire Service have responded to that in a quite a timely manner. And groundbreaking work, which became ceiling breaking, spearheading the rollout of tablet computers to the front line, a national first. To have a police officer being able to attend a crash and complete all of the reports whilst they're still at the scene without having to go back to the police station. Despite the heights of being the Commissioner's right hand woman, Ms Adams remains firmly grounded in her belief in burgeoning talent. Around 34% of our organisation are women. Uh, we've got a number of uh, young and emerging leaders, and I'll be certainly playing a role in mentoring and supporting those women so that they get to positions such as this. Tom Johnson, 7 Tasmania News. After more than a century of offering priceless advice to new families, a much-loved local organisation is going by a different name. Launceston children came together to play and celebrate the new Families Tasmania. Formerly known as a Child Health Association, the organisation offers support for parents and tips on sleeping, breastfeeding and mindfulness. I guess it can be a bit lonely being a first time mum if your friends from beforehand don't have children. So the chance to meet with other people who've done it all before, they have some idea of what they're doing. Parents can come along and let their kids run around and they can decompress a little bit. They can have a coffee, they can meet their friends, they can have a chat to other mums who might be in similar situations. 
The organisation was established in 1917 in a bid to reduce Tasmania's high infant mortality rate. Bonorong Wildlife Sanctuary is calling on Tasmanians to become rescuers, with an extra thousand animals predicted to need help. The organisation is trialling online training courses to recruit more people, especially rescuers in remote areas. A plea to help our state's most vulnerable animals. We've never been as desperate as we are right now. From wallaby joeys to wombats and everything in between, Bonorong is calling on you to help rescue the sick, injured and orphaned. The wildlife sanctuary is busier than it has ever been, especially with COVID halting its ability to train new rescuers. We're seeing a fairly abnormal spike in numbers um, at the moment that you wouldn't generally see this time of year and there's probably a variety of factors that lead to that. Bonorong is now training people online with three virtual courses proving a success. For those considering joining, it's a rewarding experience. You may even receive a kiss from your newfound friend. Being a rescuer, a lot of people have this image of someone running through the bush in khaki with a net and trying to catch a wallaby running at 30 kilometres an hour. It's as simple as walking up, picking up a box or a bag, popping, popping it in a car and driving it to where you're going. And if you're time poor. <laughs> Even if you attend one rescue in a year, it is worth having you as part of the service. Elizabeth O'Neill, 7 Tasmania News. An injury to veteran Claire Saltmarsh soured Derwent's 3-0 win over Canterbury in the hockey. Not ideal, but the timing is as good as it could have been with only one game in the next four weeks and Saltmarsh should easily slot back in for the finals. I'm actually not concerned. Um, my mentality is around um, getting through the injury, um, but I've done a lot of fitness work during the off-season and leading into where I'm currently at. Derwent won 4-1 in the men's with two goals to Angus Bolton. Good evening. The cloud cover had temperatures a little warmer than they've been of late. Hobart 15 degrees, Launceston 14, Burnie and Devonport 13. After scoring just seven yesterday, Bushy Park hit our high of 16 degrees, which was also recorded at Campania and Grove. Bushy Park also recorded our overnight low of minus one. Friendly Beaches 15, Smithton and Helen Strawn and the Islands 14, Lowhead 13, Lyaweenie 7. Areas of cloud over the majority of Tasmania, some clear sky over the east of the state. A cloud band extends from over the Indian Ocean through South Australia with mostly high cloud over the southeast of the nation. Plenty our way as well to the west. Tomorrow the cold front decays into a trough to our west, moving over the bite with a deep low. A high over t the Tasman Sea has a ridge over the nation's northeast. Winds northeast northwestly at 10 to 20 knots, tending eastly over southern waters in the morning, swells at 2 metres. Hobart expecting a top of 12 tomorrow with a shower or two, 12 also for Jeeveston, 11 the high for Bothwell. Launceston, 12 the top after an overnight low of 8 degrees. Rain, rain for Devonport, 8 to 12 as well and 6 to 11 the temperature range for Cressy. Burnie rain, high of 13, 13 also for Strawn, rain on King Island, Curry 14 degrees. And for the east, 14 the top for St Helens with showers increasing, a shower or two for Swansea, 13, 13 also for Orford with a shower or two. On Thursday, rain about the north and west coast, patchy rain elsewhere, maybe a thunderstorm over Bass Strait, showers over the west, north and central areas and possible showers elsewhere on Friday. And on Saturday, showers possible again, partly cloudy though over Hobart and the east. Showers and a late storm in Perth, showers also for Adelaide, Melbourne, Canberra and Sydney, partly cloudy and 23 in Brisbane. Cloudy and 10 in Hobart, 11 right now in Launceston, Devonport, cloudy and 12 degrees. That's the weather, Kim. I noticed you weren't paying any attention to that, so it's your loss. You won't know what to wear tomorrow.